Hey Bucky, so today I'm going to go over some of my favorite books that are authored by black authors. So let's get started. books so to not make this video an hour long I'm going to show the book and give like a quick snippet um, some of these are more well known than others so you might know them um, but I want to show you all of the books that are my favorite authored by black authors um, because I think honestly you should go and check out all of these books first up we have a middle grade book it is Amari and the Knight Brothers no surprise this is my favorite middle grade book um, B.B. Alston is absolutely amazing. Um, he writes such a really, really interesting and intriguing fantasy world that immediately hooks you from the get-go. Basically, this is about a young girl. Her brother um, has been gone for a while, but when she discovers a suitcase, I believe it is, or a briefcase, something like that, and figures out that he was um, actually transported to like this magical world and stuff and magical school, she joins. And, um, it's a bit, um, it's a bit of that magical school, actually it's all magical school vibe. This is probably my favorite magical school book to recommend to people to read, and I absolutely recommend you to read it now. I also think book two might have just released, or is releasing soon, and I, I want to say I've seen the cover of book three, but I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on that. Next I have some contemporary recommendations. Uh, first up is Every Variable of Us by Charles A. Bush. Um, this is about a girl. She is a basketball player, but when she is shot and it kind of crushes her dreams, um, well, her chances of getting a basketball scholarship and going to college that way, she joins the STEM program um, and she meets um, another girl there. They hit it off. It's a sapphic romance book. I absolutely love this. Um, it was so, so sweet. It is a tear uh, jerker too, so you are really going to want some tissues when you read this one. Next up is The Stars in the Blackness Between Them by Joanna Pre uh, Petrus. Um, this is about a girl who is moving to America, um, and she meets this other girl. They head it off. Um, another sapphic romance. Guys, I'm a sucker for sapphic romances. I'm sorry. Um, but this is such a sweet book, and it's very, very lyrical. Um, it gives like that Lonnie Taylor vibe to it, except it's in contemporary form. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so if you're looking for something that is a, be a beauty to read as well as um, to like look at the words and stuff like that. I don't know where I'm going with that sentence, but you know what I'm saying, hopefully. Um, this is it. Like, this is such a beautiful, beautiful book. Next up is You Should See Me in a Crown by Lee Johnson. Um, this is, I, I always recommend this book because it's such a good book. Um, but basically our protagonist, um, her family doesn't have a lot of money, so she needs scholarships to get into her dream school. Um, one of the scholarships that she needs, she can only get if she wins homecoming. I think it's either homecoming or prom. I can't remember. It's either home. I think it's prom though. I think it's prom. Um, so they need, uh, or she needs to, um, she needs to win prom queen, um, except she's not the most popular girl. She's kind of a loner um, and walks another girl, a new girl, into the school um, who helps her, um, who decides to help her. Um, again, sapphic romance, but absolutely such an adorable read. Um, and I really, really liked seeing uh, her journey and stuff like that. Next up, Deep in Providence by Russ M. Nelson. Um, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous book, and I cannot recommend it enough. Um, but basically, it is the aftermath of a friend. She was a part of this big group of friends. Um, it's the aftermath of a friend's death, and it switches POV between the three friends and how they're dealing with the grief, but also how they're dealing with other things that are going on um, for themselves. Um, and there is some witchcraft and stuff in there. I, I left it open for a book too. I'm hoping that there's a book too. I really would like to continue my journey with these girls. Um, it's absolutely marvelous. So if you're looking for something with a bit of magical realism, paranormal, but still contemporary at heart, this is going to be your book. Also tissues, tissues are needed. Next up is Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. 
Um, and then she wrote another one, and I can't remember the title of it, so I'm going to insert it somewhere on the screen. Um, but this is a gorgeous book. I, I say all these are gorgeous because I really, really love them all. Um, but this is an amazing book. Um, basically, our main protagonist, she's a writer. Um, and so she gets into this kind of prestigious school where uh, she can really craft her writing ability. She writes a lot of um, romance. So when she attends this school, she's very, very nervous to showcase that because it's romance. Um, and she feels very inadequate next to her peers. Um, so it explores that and it explores how she conquers that um, shyness and anxiety within herself and really blossoms as a writer. Next up is You Truly Assumed by Layla Sabrine. This is a very moving book um, and it's um, it leans more into social activism basically in the wake of a terrorist attack that is done by um, what they later find by a white man because yeah um, they all these these three Muslim girls who the POV switches between um, who are in different regions of the country see a lot of the damage that is done by this white terrorist um, is is actions on them and their community um, because racist people associate terrorism with just Muslim people and it's it's freaking awful I hate it so it's about them coming together and they all work on this blog where they share their thoughts and they get popularity but with the popularity there also comes a lot of hate online so they're having to deal with that um, and a lot of racist people in it um, Again, tissues, you're going to need it, but if you're looking for something that inspires social action, this is going to be your book. Next up is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Acevedo. She's wrote other works. I will showcase them here because I am having mush brain right now and I can't remember anything. Um, but I really, really like this book. It's, a, it's another lyrical book, um, but this, yeah, this one deals with Amani's journey. Uh, she got pregnant. She's had a baby and she has dreams of becoming a chef she wants to become a chef so it's her balancing her child and her uh school work but also trying to um succeed in her dreams and like she's a really good cook and you just root for her the whole entire time and this is one of the very few ya books that talks about one of the bigger issues in america i would say is teen pregnancy this one really really talks about it and showcases it and I kind of wish that YA did that a lot more with their contemporary works where it talked about um, teen pregnancy and showcased that in a better light like this one did. Like this one showed the hardships. It absolutely showed the hardships of teen pregnancy. But it also showed the joy that can come from having a child um, and the joy moments that you find um, when you do that. But I wish that there was more YA that talked about that, that talked about um, the hardship, the dangers, the um the backlash um uh, options stuff like that because there's just so very few but this one absolutely perfection and then another i think this is the last one in my contemporary stack but i'm not entirely sure so sorry uh, we might go back to it um uh, but another one to inspire social action that you should be reading in preparation for november november we need to go out there and vote and change things um it is the voting booth by brandy colbert this is about voting um but our main character our female main character over here because it's still pov um she is super smart and knows the voting process she's volunteered and she's really really into her civic duty um our male protagonist um <laughs> He wants to vote, but there's some issues that he faces. So they team up together and she goes to try to figure out how to um, help him um, vote and have his voice heard. This is a very short read, so you're going to get through it quickly, um, but it inspires um, you to, it like gives a call to action for you to go out there and have your voice heard with uh, voting and ballots and stuff like that. So highly recommend, especially for the upcoming elections that we are facing. All right, now these are like a mix of like fantasy i think there might be a sci-fi in there i'm not sure because i faced them the wrong way for me i think they might all fall under the fantasy category and there's like one or two retellings in here um but i wanted to start off with one that i am currently rereading because i love it so much it is the gilded ones by namina forna um the sequel the merciless ones just came out and i just read it four out of five it's a great book um but this this is such a really really good book uh, fantasy Basically, our main character is living in this society um, where they, she is a female 
Um, and then she, as a black female, are very oppressed. Um, there is a lot of, it's like a v religious society. Can the beers, what's going on? I don't know. Um, but, um, so she lives in this oppressive society and when they turn 16, I believe, they have to go and get their blood inspected to make sure that they're pure. If they're not pure, they're outcast from society. Um, and then there's these <laughs> absolutely terrifying, um, creatures. Um, so our main character, she's on her way to go get her blood tested. Um, and these terrifying godlike creatures come from nowhere and they start killing people. Well, one of them goes to kill her dad. Her dad is her only living parent. And she says, um, I think she says enough or stop. And she makes them leave the creatures. So they're like, oh God, she's, um, she's impure. Um, and stuff like that and they kill her but she keeps coming back so they kill her and then she keeps coming back and they kill her and she keeps coming back um and eventually she finds her way into this squad of uh female warriors that are going to go out and <laughs> and deal with the gods situation the gods situation the fearsome creatures it's very interesting it's <laughs> one of the best fantasy books that I have read recently um, and I really really love it so I highly recommend this. Kind of like on the softer fantasy side it is A Shattered Midnight by Danielle Clayton. Danielle Clayton is such a good writer. I absolutely love her um, but this one is book two of the Mirror series because uh, different authors they're doing that Disney thing. Disney really likes doing this where different authors write books in a series. Um, she's writing book two. You don't necessarily need to read book one, which is Broken Mirror, I think. I always forget the title. Um, you don't have to necessarily read it, but you might want some context. But basically, our main character, um, she is a witch. She is from two bloodlines um, that are full of witches, and she gets a ton of powers, more than the, what she can normally control. So much that when she gets angry, she accidentally kills someone. She's sent to a New Orleans to live with her aunt. Um, and her aunt um, has marriage prospects for her. And um, teams up with this, I don't want to say witch, but kind of like a shaman. stuff, Something like that. Where um, she's like, okay, well now you're going to give up your power. You're going to live normally, blah, blah, blah. Well, she might have other things in mind. Um, such a good book. Such a good series. And I can't wait for the third one. Next up, another retelling is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. Um, <laughs> I love this. Um, I love Kaylin. I love Kaylin's books. Um, but this is, again, like a lot of feminism, kind of like the Gilded Ones. Um, basically our main character lives in this oppressive society towards women. Every year there is like the Cinderella ball where they, um, reenact what, um, like Cinderella's, the Cinderella story basically like in this one she was like alive and well and everything like that, blah, blah, blah. Um, but when our main character figures out that this society ain't shit and she's a lesbian and she doesn't want to marry be married off to some guy she just wants to be with her girlfriend um she runs away and finds an ally who will help her deal with this society if you know what i mean such a good book such a good book um and here's a i think um she caitlin barons also wrote this poison heart and this wicked fate and i, I think don't quote me but very very well done uh, like very very good author this is going to be one that you're going to want to um be uh, be on the lookout for because she's going to do amazing things next up is wings of ebony i'm still trying to read this so it's still on my tbr pile but from what i understand our main character is kind of like a half god and this isn't your percy jackson like yay i'm a half god i got powers like godparent may might love me um and i go and do uh, adventurous things um the gods in this are like kind of frightening from what i understand and then there's this whole thing about human trafficking and stuff like that um and she's obviously in, dressed like a superhero she's going to do superhero things i'm very excited for this um to see if my predictions are right i really don't like to read synopsis but i know that this book's going to be epic and then i have wings of ash that i also have to read which i'm going to read immediately after this 
If you didn't think that this list wouldn't include Legendborn, well, you were wrong. <laughs> I absolutely love Legendborn. This is another retelling life book, um, but King Arthur uh, retelling um, our main character. She is going to a college in North Carolina, I believe, and she uncovers like this kind of secret society and weird stuff start starts to happen and she uncovers her destiny. It's really good. Guys, like, this is something that if you don't take any other recommendation from me in this video, you need to read this. Uh, Blood Marked is coming out in November, I believe, still. Um, so please pick this up, read it, and get, uh, get it read on time for Blood Marked to come out. Next up is Ray Bear by Jordan Mifuiko. Um, This was a fun book. I actually listened to this one on audiobook, and it was such a good audiobook. I absolutely love it, and I'm thinking about buying the audiobook. <laughs> I've been listening to it because whoever narrated the audiobook, they're amazing. Um, but basically, <laughs> there is okay, so there is like this whole past story about um, this lady whose name who kind of is referred to as Lady throughout the book. Um, and she has such animosity for the king of this region, um, and she develop she devises a plan. Um, which includes her offspring, who she then sends to join this, uh, join the court. And like in this one, the kingdom is comprised of children from different areas. Um, it's like kind of competing, but not. Um, but anyways, like the lady's plan is X. I'm not really going to say it because it would kind of spoil the surprise. Um, and our main character has to figure out like what she wants to do really and um, I've not read the sequel I need to read the sequel but this one was such a good book and I absolutely love it next up is which is steeped in gold by Cannon's uh, smart so this book is basically about these two girls one has been captive um, for basically having magic and the other one um, has kind of been privileged but is like keeping the magic secret they don't really like each other but they end up teaming up to take down the person that they both kind of hate so it's a frenemies book um, but I'm absolutely so excited to read this eventually one day um, I can't wait I cannot wait all right next up is blood scion by Deborah F um, Filet F Fale? Fale? I, I, I know I'm mispronouncing it someone please correct me um, but this one is such a good book basically it's about this girl her mother um, left suddenly left the village so she's been trying to figure out what's happened to her mother when she gets recruited into her country's military and they're like we're gonna go hunt these people well those people are her too uh she has the same abilities as them they're basically the military is wanting to fight these magic people she has magic she has to contain it and hide it um there is so many twists in this book and it's it's a bit gory so if if you're an older YA reader I recommend this one uh, younger ones maybe um, follow your parents advice and you know stuff like that but this is such a good book guys this is such a good book second the last one is within these wicked walls by Lauren Blackwood this is a Jane Eyre retelling and I absolutely love it um, you know it follows the Jane Eyre thing except our main character she can see ghosts and she kind of like exercises them. She's an exorcist, kind of. Um, and her biggest challenge and her first challenge uh, might, uh, might be the one that kills her in this house. Um, it's so well done. So if you're into like classical retellings, um, but you want a little bit of paranormal, this is going to be the book for you. Next up, I have I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Gilly Siegel. Um, this is such a good book. And I can't wait to read Why We Fly, which is also by both of them. But basically, this book takes place um, in Atlanta. They're all, the both of the main characters are at a stadium. One is black, one is white. Uh, they have like their different lives and stuff like that. But when there's a shooting that breaks up, they find themselves together and they have to rely on each other to help survive and get through the night. Um, so if you're really, really into um, again social justice books. Um, this is going to be a really, really good book for you to read. And lastly, um, you cannot have a best books by black authors list without Akata Witch. Um, 
one of them. I have another I have another couple, but I don't have copies with me right now. But I caught a witch is such a good fantasy, guys. Um, it's another magical school fantasy where this girl, she like kind of grew up in New York. She uh, lives in Nigeria. She's albino. Um, and she gets kind of, um, indo well, not indoctrinated, um, kind of, uh, like, swept into, like, this magic, and she figures out, like, she's super powerful and super good. Um, I'm doing this synopsis injustice, but it is such a good read, and I highly recommend this book. Camera battery overheated, so we have to change positions. If the camera's in a new place, I'm very, very sorry. I can't check very well. Um, I don't have a viewfinder on this camera. That's every book by black authors that I recommend that I have on my shelves. There are a couple others that I don't have on my shelves anymore because I lent them out to people and then they never returned them. But it's okay, they might have needed it more than me. But those would be The Hate You Good by Angie Thomas and Dear Martin by Nick Stone. But yeah, I think that is everything for right now. That is a good stack for you to start out with. Maybe next year I will have some more. I'm constantly, constantly looking for um, more books. Um, especially by black authors, diverse reads, stuff like that. So I'm um, more for you next year. So thank you guys for watching. See you again. Bye.